our relationships, whether romantic, with family, or even our platonic relationships. They play a huge role in how we see ourselves. A positive relationship can lift us up, provide support during challenging times, and it can even encourage us to blossom when we feel like giving up. A negative one, on the other side, can increase our stress and anxiety, reinforce negative thought patterns that we tried to let go a long time ago, and even plant seeds of doubt, whisk those little seeds of doubt, when we most need encouragement and support. This is why having a healthy healthy relationship is so important and so vital. And I know that all of us want healthy ones, but the question is how do we actually get them? And then maybe even more so, how do we know if the relationships in our life are pulling us up or dragging us down? That's what we're gonna talk about in this video today. But before we get into that, if you are new here, my name is Nay, and on this channel we talk about living authentic and intentional lives. So if that's something you're interested in, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and give it a thumbs up so you can see more content like this. Okay, so how do we know if we are in a healthy relationship? If you know me, I am a very big family person. I am so close with my family and I love them dearly. We do holidays together, we talk multiple times a week and we all serve out of community church. We do it, we do life together. And I was talking to my brother the other day and we were like, you know what, this isn't actually super common. It's not super common for siblings, especially as adults, to be super close still when you get into adulthood. That's not super common. And we were like wondering, what is it that makes our family so tight and actually desire to spend time together because I have been, oh, I have been in relationships where it has been the complete opposite. So I know there's got to be some vital things that keeps us and keeps relationships, whatever it might be, familial, platonic, or romantic, keeps us tight together. The first thing I realized is that when you are in a healthy relationship, you feel like you are safe. And not safe as if, oh my gosh, this person is gonna come inside and come and attack me and now I'm with my family, with my people, with my partner, and now they won't attack me. Not necessarily that safe, which I mean, that could be it too, but more so emotionally safe. You feel like you can be 1000% yourself. You're not trying to put on a front. You're not trying to prove yourself to somebody else. You're not trying to say, oh yeah, look at me. Like, now let me put on this show and this parade, or let me go lower than what I usually am. You're completely yourself, and you know that yourself is accepted. That is the foundation of a healthy relationship. If you are in a relationship and you feel unsafe emotionally to be yourself, that might be the biggest sign that something is probably off. The second thing is if there is open communication. This might look like asking for help when you need it, which can be very tough. But to know that I have somebody that I can rely on if I need help, and I might not need help all the time, but there's somebody that I can actually go and ask if I do find myself in a situation that I need help in. It also means to be able to share my thoughts and my opinions on something and know that they're not gonna run away or abandon me or leave if they don't agree with it. I was thinking about it, and a lot of times, a lot of people who deal with maybe seclusion or isolation, they can struggle with open communication in relationships and it can feel like, you know what? If I talk to somebody about what I'm feeling, what's the point of that? They, they can't fix it. They can't do anything about it. Why am I telling them how I'm feeling or what I'm thinking? Why am I telling them that? And I was thinking about it because I can completely relate to that too. But I was thinking, and with my family, and I always go back to that because I know that that is a healthy relationship and something that I strive for all of my relationships to look like. When I go and tell them about a need that I have, or maybe a situation, or I go and tell them about something that's been stressing me, whatever it might be, I'm not looking for them to solve it. I'm not looking for them to say, well, you know what, do this and this and this and this and this, and then you're good. No, I'm not looking for that. I'm looking for them to just be there, to show me that they care, to show me that, wow, like you're gonna be present with me. I am worthy enough of like just your presence and your full attention. That promotes self-esteem, it promotes confidence, even subconsciously without you thinking about it, it will promote those good things. Somebody put it this way as the ministry of presence. And I thought that was so beautiful because that's exactly what it is. Me being present, even if I am not speaking and telling you exactly what you need to do, step one, step two, step three, I'm there. A third way you might see it is if there is a mutual respect. And that respect can go a couple of ways. The first I would probably say is with boundaries. You know you're in a healthy relationship if you can say no to somebody and not be afraid that they're gonna leave or abandon or walk away. You feel the freedom to just be able to say, you know what, no, I'm not really feeling that this weekend. Or I'm not really feeling, you know, I don't really like that kind of food. Or I'm not really blah, 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 blah. Whatever it might be, the freedom to say no and to have your personal boundaries that is huge 
huge in a healthy relationship. And that actually leads to the second point where it is knowing that both of you are your own individual person. Both of you guys, two separate people. And respecting that, knowing that this person won't have all of your opinions, they won't share everything else, you won't have all of theirs, but you respect one another. You know that, yes, of course, we have different life experiences. Even if we're in the same family, even if we've done life together for 20 years, we're partners, we're married together, we've done it together for 20 years, we still are different people. And I might see things in a different light than you, but I'm still willing, because we are in this together, because we're in a relationship together, I still care about what you have to say, even if it differs from what I think. Number four is that you can trust the person. <laughs> have you ever been in a relationship, I mean, I'm sure a lot of us has, where it's like you're talking to somebody and you can just see, you can see all over them that they're lying. Mm, they're lying. They, they want me to think that they're telling the truth. They kind of even maybe are convincing themselves that they're telling the truth, but they're not they're not telling the truth. That derodes the relationship over time. It literally makes it cave down. The more that this trust is built in a relationship, the less you feel like you can get close to the person. When someone's honest with us, it allows us to get close to them and really know them and accept them for who they really are. And that's the same for you. When we build a place of trust with somebody else, it allows them to be able to get close to us and accept us for who we really are as well. Number five is that you're both willing to compromise when needed. Now that is huge in relationships because a lot of the times we want to have our way. Sometimes it takes compromise in relationships because just like I mentioned before, you are not the same person. You have different likes and dislikes. And honestly, that is probably what makes you guys so close to begin with because there are different traits that both of you guys are carrying that makes you guys attract to one another. They say it all the time, opposites attract. Me and my siblings, me and my family, we are not, all of us have different traits. We all have different things about us that make us ourselves. But when we come together, we realize that I won't always get my way. Sometimes I might have to do something else. I know for me, my family has a lot of different intolerances. Some with nuts, some with lactose intolerance, some are plant-based, some are gluten intolerant. We have so many different things. And we know when we're looking for restaurants, even if we don't have that particular intolerance or that particular food preference, we know to check to see the menu to see, okay, will so-and-so be able to eat here if we go to this place? Will so-and-so like something that's on the menu, be able to find even something, fries, something? Will they be able to find something that they can eat on the menu? A good relationship is someone who's not just thinking about themselves all the time and only in their own heads and only thinking about what they desire, but thinking about the other person as well. And sometimes even being flexible with what they want so that both people can be happy in the situation. Number six is huge. It is that you are able to handle conflict well and effectively. I think a lot of people think that, you know what, if I'm in a healthy relationship, we will never fight, we will never disagree, we will always think about the same things, we will always be aligned in every single thing that we wanna do. And unfortunately, that's just not the truth. That's just not the truth. We're all human, we all have different opinions, we all have different thoughts. And sometimes, they might clash, but it's not the fact that they clash that's the problem, it's what do we do with that? One of the biggest sayings that I remember one of my mentors told me that I it sticks with me is that if we have a common goal in mind, then we are on the same team. There is no him, she, they, there's none of that. It's we. We are on the same team. If our common goal is to have a successful relationship, is to be in this together, then we are on the same team. And the goal is to work it out. I don't wanna be afraid that if we come in a conflict that I'm like, oh gosh, that might be the end of us. Oh man, they're just gonna leave now or we're never gonna talk again. Like that shouldn't be a fear in a healthy relationship. It should be, you know what? Maybe that person needs their space. Maybe I need my space, but we're gonna come back together because we care about the relationship more than even our pride and our ego. And number seven, is consistency. Knowing that that person is gonna be the same person that they are here with you as they are with their friends, as they are outside, as they are at work. And of course, different qualities, different traits might come to the surface in different situations, but at the core of them, at the core of them, they're still recognizable, you still know them, and what they say matches up with what they do. So if they say that they stand for something, then they don't all of a sudden not stand for that thing when they are in the presence of other people. They stand for it in every single place. And that builds what we talked about in one of the other points, that builds trust. If I can see that you're consistent, you match up with what you say, and also, you're consistent with me when you say you're gonna do something you do it huh, trust is built in a relationship and that is when we know we're in something healthy at the end of the day a healthy relationship is built on communication trust and safety knowing this can help us to evaluate our current relationships and also know what to look for in future ones so if this resonates with you I encourage you to join our challenge this is the subject of week number three and if you're looking for how to be yourself in relationships I would encourage you to watch this video till then I love you guys